Good afternoon, everyone. Report card on the Arctic. Another extreme heat wave strikes the North Pole, according to the Washington Post, also claiming that the warm could hasten the melt. When we look at Pio Mas, 2018 on the right side, that's how much sea ice there is, more than 2006, more than 2007, more than 2017, more than 2016. Also, when they talk about temperatures up in the Arctic, where we are now, the black line, let me zoom in. What happened with January when we were far above all these last years? Not a peep in the news about that. They claim sea ice is going low. It's still within the 10-year average. Oh, and they forgot about the massive snowstorms in northern Italy. They did talk about the extreme below normal temperatures on Greenland, but they left out all the almost record cold over in Eastern Asia and where all this cold got displaced. They didn't talk about the massive cold front that's on the way and the snow that's coming to the United States and Canada next week. Now, did they? And for those of you, my subscribers, thank you so much. I'm starting to back up my channel on BitChute. If you can come over there, subscribe. I will start backing everything up on there. So there is absolutely another way for you to find this information. And this video is supported by Hemp Lucid CBD oil for your mind, body, and spirit. The link's below in the description box. And as the news headlines around the world are picking up the Washington Post, another extreme heat wave strikes the North Pole. Okay, that's weather, that's not climate, that's a couple day event first. Secondly, scientists, which they give no names to, say that this warming could hasten the melt of Arctic sea ice, which is already near record low levels. That's great and fine and dandy, but they're not really talking about the grand solar minimum. The effects of which here I put in an easy to understand format for any age on our planet. Cosmic rays have an effect of more cloud cover, Atmospheric compression events and all these massive floods we're seeing, I am saying absolutely it's related to the wandering jet streams and a combination of cosmic rays. The uptick in volcanoes is being correlated through peer-reviewed research of silica-rich magma chambers with the cosmic rays inducing greater amount of eruptions. We got crop losses and we are just seeing every facet of the grand solar minimum occur. And when I say that, I want to back it up with some science so you have a timeline when we talk about the state of the Arctic as well as the rest of our climate moving forward. Here is the timeline based on Valentina, Zarkova, Shepard, and Popov's double dynamo in the sun. It's a canceling wave. When those waves split really far apart, that's when we have the most effect on our weather. Let me zoom it out for you and show you exactly where we are and what you can expect over the next couple years, especially starting right now. We're in the yellow and we're transiting into the green. And this is pretty much split down in June or July. The amplification is going to really take hold here. If you notice all that wild weather we saw over say the last full year from 2016 to 17, or even from 2017 to the beginning of 2018, you'll see that it was just that little tiny ramp up. But as you see, when we're splitting the wave here into 2018 to 19, look how wide that gets. And then from 2018 and 19, it widens again. This is your playbook for extreme weather that is heading our way. I'm also calling for more sea ice. Let's take a look at the low sea ice that the Washington Post talks about. This is from P.O. Moss. I've linked everything below in the description box. You can chase down all the links in this story, as well as Hemp Lucid. If you are going to purchase anything, please use the link I've provided there. This is for maximum sea ice volume that's reached during April generally of each year. So it peaked on April 16th. Now the total freeze during 2017 and 18 freezing season was the highest since 2013. But not that much above 2006 to 2017 average. I'm sorry, what did I miss here? Let me zoom that out for you so you can actually take a look at it. This is the sea ice volume total freeze. We are at the right in 2018. The news keeps saying that we're almost at record lows. Wait, 2017, lower. 2007, 2006, lower. We're pretty much even, if not equal, with 2014, 15. And if we were gonna to continue to decline, as they've told us, Arctic sea ice is disappearing year upon year, 
from 2007 forward, that should have been a step down every single year, but it's not. It's increased since 2007, tapered off a slight bit, and now it's increasing again. We got Hudson Bay ice anomalies, got Great Lakes ice anomalies, got Minnesota Lakes ice anomalies, finally unfreezing, and they've had the latest recorded ice since the early to mid 1800s. And here we have the Arctic. The news is talking about it being almost record low, but this is from the Polar Ice Center. Let's take a look at it in a different format. Some people don't like bar graphs. I want to show you another climate data set here. 2018 has been recorded and verified up to the black. What's an operational product, meaning they're getting the data in and they're crunching it, trying to catalog it. That's the red. So also let me zoom this in for you here so you can see it more clearly. I thought we were going to almost record low ice. We are nearly touching the 1981 to 2000 mean. And you can clearly see it's above other years as well. And I thought, okay, let me jump over to the three-day ice mean. I kind of like this chart because it takes the last 72 hours of historical on a 10-year average and shows you if you're inside the 10-year average max min or you're out of it. Where are we? Oh, we're in it and increasing a little bit. They forgot this chart somehow in their news report. Also, you keep hearing the world is warming, the world is warming. Uh, actually, it's only 0.21 of a degree Celsius, two tenths of a degree. Remember all these IPCC protocols and all the carbon taxes and everything that are coming out or they want to come out are supposed to limit it below two degrees Celsius, which is literally 10 times higher than it is now. These temperatures are decreasing. This doesn't make the news either. And it is predicted this is going to fall even though it's coming into an El Nino and these temperatures are still down where they are. It's predicted to fall even further. It's on a trajectory where it goes warmer, cooler, warmer, cooler based on summer, winter, summer, winter. But we'll see where we are after coming into the next year or so. Predict a grand solar minimum, cool off more ice. And again, let's talk about temperatures. They don't put these types of graphs in these Washington Post reports. But I like to come right to the science itself. This is Danish Meteorological Institute, DMI, two meter temperature, which means six foot above the ground, basically, north of 80 degrees north, all the way up to the North Pole, talking about the freezing degree days. Now we are at the black line, currently curving off. We'll see where we go. But I want to zoom right in here on January and February. That is above all the other years in the winter time. Kind of an inconvenient fact for that first month of January. And also referring back to the Washington Post, they use a different data set from somebody else's website in there. I just went straight to the DMI to take a look at the same temperatures north of 80 degrees north. And that blue line, that is below freezing. So when they talk about the whole Arctic could melt, how can it melt when it's still mm, 10 degrees Celsius below freezing? That I don't get. That blue line, we're not even close to anywhere melting yet. This is the total Arctic from 80 degrees north all the way around the northern hemisphere right up to the North Pole. That blue line is freezing. Understand that we are nowhere close to melting. Ocean circulation currents, those break ice. Massive wind events like we've seen up in Canada, that breaks ice. Not temperatures below zero. Wind, yeah. Water currents, break it up. Melting, not yet, sorry. And these temperatures are even supposedly with that giant heat spike referenced in the Washington Post article. And we're still that far below freezing. And then we come in for the above ground temperatures on the 8th and 9th, these are degrees Celsius, so minus 10 degrees Celsius is about mm, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see there's a full on Arctic front on the way down to the United States, again with below normal temperatures. And if you look over to the far right of the chart there, you're looking at something that's like minus 35 Celsius. And then there's more snow on the way in the next 10 days through May 16th. This is how much snow is going to be in these particular areas of North America. Looking around, I don't know, 16 inches, 
foot and a half still. Some places getting four to six inches up around the Great Lakes. What about the Central Rockies? Whoa, another foot and a half up there. Now let's take a look at the enormous amounts of hail slash snowfall coming down in northern Italy. They didn't report that. Hmm, how strange. Let's take a look how deep that actually is. Now this was a, a strange mix of hail and snow coming down together. Don't know what you would call that because both were happening in the atmosphere at the same time. Strange in and of itself. But that matches right back up with the Grand Solar Minimum's jet streams wandering, different wind anomalies and compressing weather fronts that we just don't normally experience. This is absolutely going to intensify and this explains it here. This is the timeline when we move out you can see the amplification of weather from 2018 to 19. 2019 to 20 is going to be an eye-opening game-changing crop loss. Your lives are going to be changed forever year and once we finally reach the final apex of this around, I don't know, late 2020 through 2021, this is going to be a real interesting time for our societies moving forward, especially with crop production. Temperature changes that we're experiencing and all the strange weather, it is absolutely due to what you're seeing with a double dynamo in the sun. And get ready, this is a once in a 400 year event on our doorstep. And I don't know why the media is not really talking about this. They're still trying to convince you that the Arctic's melting and going into all time record low ice. But all the information I just presented to you shows completely otherwise. And I've also had so many people ask me, can they send me photos, etc. So I've set up this mailbox, so absolutely you can. So from this point forward, if you send it to adapt2030 at oilseedcrops.org, you can send anything you like in there. I've limited the maximum upload that you can send me to two megabytes. I won't accept anything more than that. If you do, please use Dropbox, send me the link, and then I can dig into the photos. And this video has been brought to you by Hemp Lucid CBD oil for your mind, body, and spirit. And while you're doing research about all these links, make sure you look up some CBD oil information and use the code ADAPT for 20% off your purchase.